Hey guys, Ryan here. We're about to do a total body workout. We're gonna hit every major muscle group. All you need is a few dumbbells. This is for either beginners to strength training or if you have not been strength training consistently recently. So if it's been a couple months and you haven't done any strength training, this is a good place to start. Women, you're gonna start with five, eight, and 10 pound dumbbells. But if you're a beginner, you may not even need those heavier dumbbells. Men, we're gonna start with five, 10, and 15 pound dumbbells. Um, and even some men may not end up needing those heavier dumbbells. Uh, we will talk about that as we go through. So get your dumbbells ready and we're gonna get right to a warm up. Alrighty, here we go, let's start warming up. So we always wanna do a good warm up before a workout. We're just gonna start by marching. Only go as high with your knees as you feel comfortable. If this feels okay, if we have no issues, we can kind of get the knees a little bit higher. We always want to warm up before a workout. Um, a lot of people, they're in a hurry, they're rushed, so they think, oh, let me skip the warm up and cool down because my workout is what is important. Um, and while a workout does matter, your warm up and cool down is what's going to keep you feeling good during the workout. It's going to decrease soreness the next day or the days after, and it's going to drastically reduce the likelihood likelihood that you'll have an injury. So we always want to warm up with something nice and easy to get you going. So arms out to the side. And we want the arms relatively straight. We don't want to be down here. We don't want to be way up in the air. We want our arms to be coming right out of our shoulders. Relatively straight arms, short, tight circles. We want to warm up the shoulders since the shoulders attach everything to our arms. If this bothers your shoulder, you will want to check out one of my videos uh, that covers shoulder issues. So you'll want to do some corrective exercises and some other warm-ups to help out your shoulder. So from here, nice wide stance, comfortable stance. You're going to reach as low as you can comfortably go and then reach up to the sky. So from here, you may only be able to go to your knees. You might be able to go to your toes. And some of us can go down to the ground, but only go as low as you feel comfortable. This also may be something that bothers either your knee or your shoulder. And again, you can check out one of my other videos to try and fix those issues. Otherwise, if you ever have aches or pains, you just shorten the range of motion. So we can always do this and make it easier. So back to marching. So today we are going to be doing strength training. We're gonna hit every major muscle group. Your chest, your triceps, your biceps, your shoulders, your back, your legs. We're gonna hit a little bit of everything. But we wanna make sure we're good and warmed up. Each warm up exercise we're doing for about 30 seconds. We don't need to get too exact on the time, but we just wanna slowly start elevating the heart rate. So from here, we're gonna do what are called hitchhikers. We're bending forward at the hips, slight bend in the knees, and then our arms are flying out to the side. They're called hitchhikers, because you guessed it, thumbs up. Thumb is in the air, nice flat back. Some of you may look like this. We need to arch that back, get a super flat back, abs tight, tall posture. Squeezing the shoulder blades down and back. So we don't wanna shrug the shoulders into the ears. Get those shoulders down, flat back, keep moving. Okay, go and stand up. Back to marching. You guessed it. Now, the very nature of the way this workout is, even after this warm up, we're going to ease into things. You never know if you have an issue, an underlying injury. You might think you feel good, but then you go to pick up a weight and you tweak something. So, the workout itself also has a little bit of a built in warm up. All right, so from here, we're going to do you have three options. We're gonna start with a single leg balance. We're just standing here, one leg's in the air. If you have no issues and you feel good, we can start trying to kick. Now, if you can't, if you can barely balance on one foot, don't add the kick. Just continue to balance on one foot. If the kick is easy for you, you can even go from this into a touchdown. We go as low as you can comfortably go. You can go all the way down to the ground, great, but we need to come all the way back up to a tall posture. All the way down, all the way up. Good, let's switch legs. Same thing, start on one foot. 
everyone will be a little bit better on balancing on one foot than the other. But if you feel good, you can have the kick. If you're uh, getting some work just being on one foot, that's fine. And again, for some of us, if you're able to go down a little bit lower, only work to your abilities. Pride gets you injured. It does not get you results. So if you feel aches and pains, you feel uncomfortable, you feel any issues, pushing through will guarantee you an injury at some point. So we don't push through. We modify, we adjust. Back to marching. So if, if you're doing a good warm up and you're doing a good workout, you should feel good. So people who hate exercise, sadly, they worked with a professional who has this old school mentality, and they might even be in their 20s, but they had this old school mentality of push through it, come on, you can do it, you know, go hard, you gotta go hard. No, you don't. <laughs> so any movement you do is gonna burn calories. The more your heart rate goes up, the more calories you're gonna burn. So if your goal is to burn calories or weight loss or help your cardio, you're doing that. There's no reason to pick up a 100 pound weight if you've never exercised and run as hard as you can. That's just unnecessary. Secondly, you're gonna get injured. Thirdly, you're gonna hate it, so you're gonna quit anyway. So, you should feel good during your warm up. You should feel good during your workout. If not, I suggest you look elsewhere for what you're trying to get. So from here, just again to further warm up the movement, opening the arms up. So as you step out, we also open the arms, a little bit of a stretch in the chest, we're almost done with our warm up. Now, a warm up should be roughly five minutes or more. The longer your warm up, the better you're going to feel during your workout, the less sore you'll be the day after, and the less likely you will be to get injured. So, five minutes is an absolute bare minimum. If you do a four minute and 59 second workout, you're going to get injured. If you do five minutes, less likely. If you do eight or 10 minute warm up, again, you're just going to be that much better off. Good, done. And you can always keep going. Rewind the video, go through all these warm-ups one more time. If you have equipment, treadmill, elliptical, bike, uh, I have warm-ups for those as well. But let's get to the workout. We're all gonna start with five pound dumbbells. I know there's a lot of guys out there saying, oh, I can lift 50 pounds, and maybe you can, but if you haven't been doing it consistently, all that it takes is one little tweaked muscle and now you have a shoulder injury for the next three months that you have to deal with. Go to physical therapy for it. Or push through or fight through. So uh, pride it does not get results. So let's start with the five pound dumbbells. We're gonna start with what are called bent over rows. Tilt forward at the hips. Nice flat back, similar to what we did with hitchhikers. And we're rowing the elbows up. You wanna squeeze the shoulder blades down, back, and together. A nice smooth movement. So we don't wanna be flailing the weights around. Good, done, go ahead and stand up. Next exercise we're gonna do is uh, on the ground. So take your time, make your way to the ground. We're gonna lay on your back for chest presses. So for this one, arms are out wide. We're pressing straight up into the air, tapping the elbows lightly to the ground, and back up. Now there's more advanced versions for people who have equipment. So if you have a bench or you have a stability ball, you can lay on top of your bench or your stability ball. And I have videos with those workouts as well. But this works just as good. We're working the chest, the shoulders, and the triceps. Good, now from here, we're gonna bring the arms close together, palms facing each other, and we're gonna do what's called a skull crusher. Hint, don't crush your skull. So we're gonna bend at the elbows slowly, bringing one weight to each side of your head. So as if you have a phone in your hand, you're bringing the phone to your ear. This is working the back of your arm, your tricep. And again, this is probably one of the most efficient ways to work your tricep. We're working all three heads. The tri and tricep, like tricycle, means three. So you have three different muscles in the back of your arm that make up your tricep, and this works all three of them. Good, we're gonna take our time standing up. Set the weights down while you get up. We don't want anyone lightheaded or passing out. So take a second, take a breath, take your time standing up. From here, we're gonna do a set of squats. 
So when we squat, we always want nice tall posture. We want to pretend there's a little chair back there that we're trying to sit on. Put your weight in your heels, sit your butt back, and go as low as you can comfortably go. So that might be here, but we want to go as low as we can. What we don't want is to lean forward. But as you squat, it's natural to want to squat leaning forward, but we don't want that. For the health of your knees, for good core strength, uh, great posture and long-term health, we want to sit back into your heels, stay up nice and tall. One more for fun. Woo! All right, we're going to pick the weights up, nice and easy, and we're going to do dumbbell curls next. So. Nice tall posture, and we're curling up. So again, this workout at this point should be getting your heart rate up a little bit, it is for me. Um, so on the one hand, this might be a little easy, but that's okay, because it's still an extension of our warm up. If it's challenging, then that's okay as well, but we know we probably don't want to go up in weight. Perfect, so that's one round. So, if five pounds was challenging, we're gonna stick with five pounds for the next set. If five pounds was effortless, then we're only gonna go up to the very next weight. So again, I know- Let's say that again, folks. to the workout. Yeah, and I know a lot of you are thinking, no, that was super effortless. I'm going right to my heavier weight. That is a recipe for injury. So we're gonna start with um, the next weight up. So for women, if you have eight pounders, we're going to that. For men, we're going to 10 pounders. And again, uh, we can always go heavier later. But if you get a three month shoulder injury, you can't really do that, can you? So we're gonna start with bent over rows. I'll face this way this time so you can see a different angle. Bend over at the hips, flat back, squeeze the shoulder blades. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. You can stand up. Uh, set the weights down. Or no, sorry, we're heading to the ground for chest press. Keep in mind too, you might think, why don't we just do everything on the ground at once? The up and down off the ground is exercise too. So tall posture. Now what you might wanna do is bring the weights close together, but that's not what we want. You wanna stay wide with your hands at the top. Your forearm should be like a piston going straight up and down. By staying wide, that works the chest more than the shoulders or the triceps. And the reason we want to do that is because of the next one. So we're going right into skull crushers. So turn your hands so your palms are facing each other. Very slow on the first one because this is heavier weight now. You're bringing uh, a weight to each side of your head. Now, with an exercise like this, the weight is going to be much, much harder than the other exercises. It is also okay and more ideal to use the appropriate weight for that exercise. So, pick a weight that you can control the movement without too much difficulty, but it should not feel effortless at this point on our second set. Good. Set those aside. Take your time standing up. Take a breath. We don't want any issues with being lightheaded. So the, again, I'm gonna kinda go to the side so you can see, again, there's a little chair back there. We wanna slowly sit ourselves down on it. Squats. Feet are about shoulder width apart. Five more. Six, seven, eight. Stay up tall. Bad form is gonna screw you later. So don't worry about it. Don't let pride ruin your long-term success. Done, good. All right, we're gonna grab those weights again. We got dumbbell curls next. My heart rate's up. Nice tall posture. Now, you may want to do this when you curl. 
That is bad. We want the body to stay as still as possible so that our arms are doing all the work. Also, every time you stand up straight and you pull your stomach in tight, guess what you're doing? You're improving your posture. You're gonna look better. You're gonna be skinnier. We're training all those same muscles. Done, good. So that was round two. Same rule applies here. If the weight was light, you were able to do it, control everything, we're gonna go up to the next weight. If that was challenging, stay at that weight. Some of you may have even picked a weight that still you weren't ready for. Time to drop back down to the next weight. It is not a failure to do what's best for you. So a lot of people say, oh, I don't wanna to have to go down in weight. Well, if you're not working at the weight that's best for you, you're not gonna get the best results. If you try and progress too quickly, you're gonna get injured, you're not gonna feel good, you're gonna be way too sore, you're gonna quit. So go to a weight that's appropriate, you will get better long-term results. All right, so again, if things felt okay, we're gonna go up in weight. Women, that would be 10-pound dumbbells. Men, that would be 15-pound dumbbells. Again, we do not want a big jump here. So we're gonna start with bent over rows. Tall posture, bend over at the hips. Slight bend in the knees. One, two, three. Squeeze the shoulder blades down, back, and together. Keep that back flat. Posture is always gonna to wanna to get worse over time. One more. Done, good. Let's head to the ground. We're gonna do chest press next. All right, so remember for a chest press, we want a wide, we want our arms wide, far apart. Lightly tap the elbows to the ground. Four, three, two, one, done. Good, go ahead and set those down. Take your time standing up. We're doing roughly 10 reps for every exercise. I guarantee there's some counters out there saying you did 12, you did 11, you did nine. The number doesn't matter. I'm gonna tell you the biggest myth in uh, exercise. Whether you do nine, 10, or 11, it doesn't matter, okay? Now, if you do zero, it's a big difference between 10, isn't it? So when people get all caught up in numbers and data, that can be helpful and useful, but a lot of times it just gets in the way. It becomes an excuse. So focus on doing something well, doing it properly. All right, we got our last set of squats here. We're gonna do 10 reps. This has gotta be the best one. Your third set has to be the best. Tall posture, sit on that little chair, weight in your heels. One, two, three, four. Go as low as you can comfortably go. Again, if you have knee pain, back pain, foot pain, check out one of my videos to work on those issues. Two more for fun. Nine, 10, Woo. Let's go ahead and grab and then do dumbbell curls. Tall posture, abs pulled in. One, two, three, four, five. Pull the stomach in. Try not to swing the body. Keep the body still. Two more. And guess what? You guys forgot skull crushers. Let's head back to the ground. We wanna do our third set of skull crushers. This weight is very likely to be too heavy for many people. Skull crushers are one of the hardest exercises we're doing and you don't wanna crush your skull. So if you have to drop down in weight, this is the time to do it. So we're gonna go down slow. Make sure you have control of the weight. Right now, make the decision. If you don't feel you have control, set the weights down and drop down to the next weight or even the weight before that. Otherwise, and if you are dropping weight, go grab that weight, come back. You can pause it and get right into it. We're gonna do give or take 10 of these. Good. Whew, well done. We did it, kids. We did it. So that was the most efficient strength training routine. We hit the chest, 
the shoulders, the triceps, the biceps, the legs, your core is involved. And if you noticed your heart rate was up. So that was a total body strength training workout. Now, the next time you do this workout, you know which weights you should do. So the next workout is only gonna be that much better than this one. Always start with a light weight to warm up and increase the weight over time. But if any of these weights were effortless, we know we need to jump up on weight. If some of the weights were too heavy, we know we need to back off. So pick a weight, make an adjustment. It is good to track or write it down if you can't remember it. Wait two days or longer before you do this workout again. You wanna give your body a chance to recover. So after every workout should be a cool down. So join me, let's cool down. So we always wanna cool down so we can shake things out pace around a little bit. So after you finish your actual workout, we wanna let the heart rate slowly come down. So we're gonna do a little bit of these, but you'll notice I'm being a little lazy about it. And that's a good thing for the cool down. We wanna give the body an opportunity to recover from the exercise we just did. If you don't, you will be more sore and you'll be likely to have an injury. So many of my clients, they love working out with me because they feel good. And again, you should feel good. That's the point of exercising. And the reason most people quit is they don't feel good. So let's just do some reaches, reach across the body. This should be easy. This is not a workout. From here, we're gonna reach down to a foot. Might feel a little bit of a stretch. Just alternating the hand. Again, we're just trying to give the body a chance to slowly come back to a resting state. If we do something too challenging, it just stresses the body more. If we don't do anything, as I said, bad things happen. All right. So we're gonna take a big deep breath here and reach for the sky. And as we exhale, we're gonna dive to the ground. So big deep breath, reach for the sky. <sighs> exhale and dive down. So now we're stretching. The muscles naturally want to tighten up after you exercise. So we wanna stretch those muscles back out to a good length. Slowly roll up. Stretching should never be painful, ever. When you see people in pain when they stretch, all you're doing is making your muscles tight. The more in pain you are, the muscles just wanna protect themselves so they tighten up. You wanna be relaxed. At most, you should feel pull of muscle, but not pain. So let's do that one more time. Big, deep breath, reach for the sky. Draw, dive down to the ground, relax, and just let gravity do the work. Settle into a certain depth. Take some deep breaths. Deep breathing causes a mechanical relaxation, so your muscles have to relax. Legs relatively straight, they don't have to be locked out, but we don't wanna be doing a squat right now. Go ahead and slowly come up. Good, so one of the stretch, we have a couple stretches for our quads. We're gonna start with the most basic stretch for quads. You may feel a lot of stretch here. You may feel a little bit of stretch in your ankles. We're gonna make our way to the ground. And we're gonna start by trying to sit on our heels and I have some clients who, this is what they look like. That's as far as they can go, their quads are so tight. So sit back as far as you comfortably can, tall posture. If you don't feel a stretch here, that probably means you can do uh, the next level of stretch, which I'm gonna show in a second here. Um, before that though, you can lean back into your hands, turn your hands out. Again, just by leaning back, you may feel more of a stretch. If you're still not feeling a stretch, we can now push the hips towards the sky and relax this whole time. Take some deep breaths. Sit back. Good. Now again, as I progress, if you're not able to progress, that's not bad, that's not good, that's just what it is. So you stay in the original stretching position. Let's take our time standing up though. A lot of people have difficulty doing this stretch properly. It's the most common quad stretch, the front of your leg. Most people do not do, not do this correctly. One, drop your pride, grab onto something. 
Everyone who's like, ah, I don't need to, then they, you know, they're wiggling around and flailing. So just grab onto something. We're pulling the heel to the butt. Now I want you to look at something. I'm gonna let go for just a second. If you look at my knees, they're close together, right? A lot of people do this. They kick the leg out because it's easier, but you're not stretching the quad. So this stretch is only good if you can keep the knee pointing straight to the ground. And from here, if you still don't feel a stretch, you can push your hips forward as you pull your leg back. Good, go and set that down. We'll switch legs if you can. If not, you're catching your breath here for a second until we get to the next stretch that you can join in on. All stretches should be held for about 15 to 30 seconds. Uh, shorter than 15 seconds will have almost no impact. Longer than 30 seconds will have very little additional benefit. Multiple rounds of 30 second stretches are useful, but holding a stretch for two, three, four minutes, um, again, unless you're under professional guidance, is really just a waste of your time. Um, it'd be better to do you know, a half a dozen 30 second stretches. Um, go ahead and set that leg down. So next we're gonna do a chest stretch. You can use a wall, a pull, or your door jam. We wanna put the palm flat on a, um, a wall with your thumb pointing towards the ceiling. Your arm should be about shoulder height. And from here, you're turning away from your arm. Now again, you may not be able to go very far. You might still be facing this direction. But with this stretch, it depends where you're tight. You might feel this in your shoulder, your chest, your forearm, your hand, your fingers. It just depends where you're tight. But relax the shoulders, tall posture, and rotate until you feel pull of the muscle, not pain. Take a big deep breath. Go ahead and switch arms. Now, I said 15 to 30 seconds for a stretch, but the best length of time to hold a stretch for is however long until you no longer feel a benefit. So if after 10 seconds or after three slow deep breaths, you notice that you're not really feeling much of a stretch anymore and you rotate a little bit further, so now you feel a stretch again. Big deep breath. Now at this point, I feel just the tiniest relax of muscle, but there's gonna be a point where I no longer feel any additional relaxation. At that point, you can slowly bring your arm down, and that's a good cool down and stretch routine. Congrats, you're gonna be less likely to be sore, and you're gonna be less likely to uh, get an injury. So uh, we'll see you next time. That's it, go away, bye.